VS Code looks like a simple editor, the reality is that it's packed with productivity features, and probably you are not using them. So today we'll see a ton of VS Code tips so you can code faster and save some mouse battery. But before diving into the tips, let me tell you that I'm on a Mac, so some of the shortcuts that I will tell you are slightly different in Windows. But don't worry about that because I will not only show the macOS shortcut, but also I will show the Windows shortcut as well. So now let's go to the tips. The first one is to quickly open files. If you use Command P or Control P, it will open this window. And there are some cool things about this window. One of them is that you don't need to search exactly by the text of that file, okay, by the name of that file. For example, if I want to search for that Roman numeral scenarios, I could do something like Rome scenarios and the search will quickly find it. The other thing that I really like about this window is that when you do the common P, then you can navigate through that list. And let's say that you want to open more than one of those files. So if you want to open one of them, you will press enter. However, if you want to open several files, you can do something. For example, you can be navigating and then you find the file that you want to open. So you can click right. Once you click right, it will open the file without closing that small window where we are looking for files. For example, I want this one and I want this one and I want this one. So now you can see that I have three different tabs for those three different files that I opened. Next one is about tab navigation. So what if I want to go directly to the first one, the Roman numeral scenarios that you can see here at the top? I could go there with the mouse, however, I can also do something like press the control and the number of the tab that I want. For example, I went to the one with the index one. So if I want to go to the third one again, I can click the third. If I want to go to the second, I click control two. And I can also use the control plus the tab to navigate through them in order. For example, if I do control tab, it will open me the list and you see that when I click control tab multiple times, I will navigate through that list from up to bottom and then it will get back to the beginning. If I want to go to the previous one, I can do the control shift tab, okay? And it goes in the other way around. And if I no longer want this tab open, what I can do is as simple as common W. Tip number three, and this one is extremely useful and go do it right away. You can install the VS Code command in the path of your operating system. And to do that is as simple as going to the commands of your VS Code is command shift P or control shift P. And there you can search for path and you will see something like this. Shell install code command in path. I'm not sure if on Windows the name is slightly different. Instead of saying shell, it says something like common line or something like that. However, if you go there and you simply enter on that option, it will add code to your path. And that means that when you are using the terminal, you can, for example, just do code dot when you are inside of a folder of a given project. And by doing so, it will open exactly that project inside of VS Code. That is quite useful. Next one is Zen mode. Let me show you Zen mode before explaining what it is. If you press common K Z, Z from Zen, you will see that the VS code will throw away the file tree, all the options. You will only be focused on that tab that you are working on. I find this one quite interesting when you are explaining code to someone, you are performing a demo and you want to focus exactly on a given piece of code. You want to remove all the context so you don't have distractions on screen. Some developers also like to have this type of view when they are focused on complex method, something like that. But personally, I find it more interesting when I'm explaining code to someone. To leave the Zen mode, just press escape. The next one is Markdown Preview. Nowadays, it's quite often to find Markdown files in our projects, for example, the readme file. And I can still read it in the Markdown format. However, sometimes I want to see the markdown with a preview of the end result, especially when I'm writing them. 
So on those cases, what I like to do is to open the preview to the side and you can quickly do that with command K V. By doing the command K V, you now have side by side what you are doing. For example, if you start changing, you can also see changing on the right. Renaming symbols. Renaming a variable, as an example, is something that we do quite often. So it's quite good to know that on VS Code, you can quickly do something like pressing F2, either if you are on Mac or on Windows, and that will open this small window where you can say that, okay, I want to rename this request to create request, press enter, and it will rename that symbol everywhere. But there are other ways to do the same. You can, for example, select all the instances of a given word. How can you do that? You can do Command Shift L or Control Shift L. And as you can see now, the multiple create requests in this file are selected. That means that if I want to change the name, I can go to the place where I want. I want to name it request once again. And you can see that with just that, it quickly renamed everywhere where the request word was. So I have it here, I have it here, I have it here. So you might ask, when should I use this approach or the F2 approach? Basically, the F2 knows the context where that symbol is being used. So if you want to rename it only inside of a given method, you will use the F2. However, if you want to rename that word everywhere inside of your code, even if it's not part of a symbol, for example, let's say that is the word to do. And if you want to select that word, but you don't want to select that word everywhere, you can also do something slightly different. For example, you can go to that word, you can press command D or control D, and that now is selecting only the one where I was. I press command D again or control D, and now I have two selected, so that one and the next one, and I can keep going until I cover all the words that I want to rename. For example, if I do it this way, the last word with the name request and the previous ones will not change. For example, if I do this, you can see that only that ones were changed. Other interesting way to change multiple lines at the same time is using the multi-line cursor. Let's say that I have this list of names and I want to convert it into a JSON. So it's the name of the different months. So I can use the multi-line cursor to do that. And on Mac, I will use the command option and then I will use up or down. And if you are on Windows, you can use the control, alt and up or and down. So what I will do in this case is command, alt, down, and I will cover everything. And you can see that I have a cursor placed in the beginning of each word. Now I can add what I want. Since the words don't have all the same size, what I can do is, for example, finding the, the one that has more characters. And then based on that one, I can use the same trick. So command option up, and you can see it will place the cursor in the end. I will close it, double quotes and the comma, and then let me quickly do exactly the same to the other three. So now it would be as simple as opening and closing square brackets, and I have a JSON array. Next one is folding areas of your code. So using the curly braces, we will fold the code. It's a cool thing when you are reading code that has a lot of lines, so you can start folding and collapsing different areas of your code. And how can you do that? You can do that with the command K, command zero, or control K, control zero, and that will fold all the blocks inside of that file. So you can see that every single thing is now folded. Another way to navigate inside of a file is to use the command palette to go to a given symbol. And you can do that with using the command P or control P, and then you will press the hat, and that will give you access to the different symbols that you can find inside so for example, if I want to go to a given method right away, I can do it. Another way to quickly navigate through code is by pressing command, overing in on top of a given symbol. So for example, on top of a given method, and then you will just click on that and it will open the definition of that method. Let's talk about moving code. Let's say that I want to move this method up or down inside of a file. 
what I can do is that I can click the option and then up or down to move it. If you are on Windows, press Alt. But this is not the only use case moving a single line of code. For example, I might want to move a given block so I can do it as well. Or for example, imagine that you have different methods and you want to reorder them, you can use this technique. The other way to do exactly the same is that, let's say that you want to move this into a different place, you go to that line and then you can use the common X to cut it, go to the line where you want to place it and you do common V. The interesting thing is that you don't need to select what you want to cut and paste you simply go to the line and you do it. Another example is that if you want to duplicate that line, you can simply go to the line. You don't need to select anything. You do Control C, you do Command C, Command V on a different line, and you duplicate the line. You might have noticed that I have a small thing here on the right that is basically a map of my source file. This is useful when you have big files, not this case, but it's quite interesting and I really like this feature. And now can you enable that? You go to your commands, search for minimap and you can use the toggle to see it or to close. Another thing that I really like on VS Code is that I can quickly create a file structure with a single instruction. What, what does that mean? Imagine that I want to create a given file for a test double, something like a dummy. And I want to put that inside of a given folder structure that doesn't exist yet. So let's say that I want to do something like that. For example, test doubles is my root folder. Inside of that, I want something like uh, repositories and only then I will add my dummy.cs, something like that. So you can see that I have by this structure, two folders nested and a file inside of the repositories folder. If I simply do that and I press enter, VS Code will create the folder structure for me. Next one is about using the sidebar. Sometimes we are working on a given file and you want to move to the other one that is close to that. We could use the command P to find that file as we discussed before. However, sometimes you see it right there. Why not navigate into that? And you can do that by using the command zero that will move the focus to the file explorer and once you are there you can use the up and down keys to navigate to that so if i want to open the file that was on the side i simply position myself there with the focus there and then i press command down or control down by doing so it will open exactly that file if i want to open another one once again command zero navigate command down. Another feature that I really like is to quickly split my screen. For example, if I want to see exactly the same file on two tabs, I can do it using the command and the slash. That means that now I have the same file side by side. If I want to open another file here, for example, I can use one of those multiple ways of navigating that we discussed before. For example, I want to open that dummy file that we created. I can do that and have them side by side. Quite useful when you are writing tests. I think that terminals is one of those things that everyone really enjoys on VS Code. You can open them and close them with this shortcut is quite easy. And that will give you access to this pane right here on the bottom where you can use your terminal. For example, if you want to check what is on the directory, you can do every single thing that you usually do with your terminal. The cool thing is that you can have multiple instances of a terminal running. For example, you can see here that I could add another one. So now I have two instances of the terminal side by side. And sometimes I use this, for example, if I have a backend and a front end, and I want to have uh, the front end running, for example, and the back end, I usually use a command to run the tests. For example, I can have them side by side, but sometimes it's confusing because you use the same terminal and they have the same name. So which one is the one with the UI, the front end, which one is the one with the back end? I don't know, but I can use VS Code to rename it. I can go here and say something like, this one is for tests. And not only I can give it a name, I can also change color. 
for example, let's say that I want the, the test ones to be green. So that is quite useful to quickly understand what is what. And if you have used the terminals on VS Code, you know that you can have them side by side, but there's something that likely you don't know is that you can move a terminal into the editor and now your terminal is simply a different tab. So you can use all those techniques of navigation that we discussed before, like using the control to access the different tabs and you have more space as well. And now let's go to the last one, the title part customization. Do you know when you use multiple instances of VS Code at the same time? Because likely you are working on multiple projects or you have VS Code for front-end, VS Code for back-end, things like that. And you are always shifting between them, but you never know which one is who without opening them. There's one interesting thing that you can do that will help you to be more productive on those cases. That is customizing the color of the title bar. And how can you do that? Use the command shift P to open the commands of VS Code and there search for the workspace settings in JSON. Inside of the workspace settings, paste something like this, that is workbench dot color customizations, title bar, active background. Assign it a color. Now, once I save it, you can see that my title bar now has a different color and we can quickly change that so you can see it changing. And one interesting thing is that if you save this as the workspace settings, now the file can also be committed to your repository if you want as the VS Code settings. And that means that everyone in the team can take advantage of it. And if you feel lost and you don't find one of these commands, what you can quickly do is always the command shift P and search for the thing that you are looking for or control shift P if you are on Windows. You can also use the command shift P to open the command window and then search for keyboard shortcuts that will give you access to the reference guide where you have access to all of those shortcuts that I mentioned. So what do you say? Do you have any other tip to be more productive with VS Code that you want to share? If so, please leave a comment. And in the meanwhile, I think you will like to watch this video right here.